Hello fellow Leggers, happy Pride! It's Pride Day here in London. It may not be by the time we get this video out. Yeah, it won't but be. It may not be, it definitely won't be. But, but Pride every single day of the year, right? Why can't we have Pride why, 365 why we... days of the year? Get your rainbows out, guys, and celebrate who you are all year round. By going to the theatre, because the that's what we're doing today. On a today. lovely sunny Friday, we've decided to just sit in a dark room. We decided to go to the Royal Court Theatre, which is where we are. And we're seeing a brand new play from a creative team who have, I would say, had some magical collaborations in the past. Uh, this brand new play is called The End of History, so... Stick around to hear about all those magical connections, our thoughts on the piece. Yeah, find out how many stars and whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. Some magical connections I'm intrigued to know about this. So uh, what do we need to know about, was it the end of history? The end of history, is that what I said at the beginning? I think so. Didn't say the end of the world, did I? <laughs> you might have done. Because I know, because the, these, did, I these tumultuous have... times we're living in, it could be any moment, couldn't it? The political a... uprisings and all of those things. And this piece is a bit political from what I understand. You're absolutely right. What do we need to know about this? Well. Let's see if you can read, like, make the magical connection as we go along. We'll start with the playwright, okay. Jack Thorne, whose previous works include an adaptation of A Christmas Carol at the Old Vic, which we saw. Which is coming back for the yeah, third time this December to the Old Vic. It's becoming a bit of a festive tradition at the Old Vic, isn't it? It's December. Quick, wheel, wheel Ebenezer out again. But, but it is good. It is very, so very good. So catch our review up there. Please do that. He's also did the book for the musical Junkyard, which we saw at the Bristol Old Vic a few years ago. Yeah. He's also a BAFTA award winning screenwriter for the This Is England 90 series. Did you see it? No, but Nor he me. did something else, which is where I think I'm picking up on the magical link, but I shall stay stunned for now. Well, he's teamed up on this occasion with director John Tiffany, uh -huh. who directed the musical Once, which won multiple awards both in London and on Broadway. He did. Also did the Glass Menagerie on Broadway, which we saw the transfer of in the West End. That Fantastic was very cast. good too. Yeah. And it's not their first collaboration as writers and directors directors but their most successful to date is undoubtedly Harry Potter, Harry Potter and, and the, the Cursed, Cursed Child, Child which is playing to this day yes. at the Palace Theatre in London. It won a record and on Broadway. breaking nine Olivier Awards including Best New Play and Best Director when it premiered. And it's done well on in, um, where am I thinking? New York Broadway. Yeah, it got that it got one. several Tony Awards. I want to say six, but comment below. I can just pick. I'm picking up six, but so it did uh, an award-winning collaboration. Award-winning team between on this. this writer. It's hard adapter, not to get excited when they've done so well in the past, isn't yeah. it? Well, okay. the end of history is a brand new family drama set initially in 1997, but travelling forward through time towards the pleasant day, present day, as David and Sal's grown-up children return home for a family dinner, but Sal and David would rather feed their kids with leftist ideals and welfareism than fancy cuisine. After all, they have named all of their children after their socialist heroes. So. Political. Political. Okay. Really exciting cast for this, and I mean, you'd expect them to attract some real talent for this, right? With As such in a the strong creative team. team. Yeah. Here at the Royal Court. David yes. Morrissey is playing the Dave, uh, role of David, presumably Love so David he doesn't Morrissey. forget his name. <laughs> and now he was in The Walking Dead for many series, playing the governor character, was it, with the eye patch? That's where you're known from mostly. Well, che no, he's done loads of stuff, actually. Check out his the bit of a did a dum you know the bad lip reading Should of I Walking Dead. Should I put a link Dead. below? Put a link below, that's okay. hilarious. He also was in Hangmen here at the Royal Court. Loved it. was phenomenal. Yes. Julius Caesar Bridge at the Theater. Bridge Theatre that yeah. we saw as well. Now playing his wife Sal is Leslie Sharp. She's done a huge amount of stage and screen, including playing Helen in the National Theatre production of A Taste of Honey, which is about to go back out actually on tour. In September. With yes, a different it is. Helen, Jodie Prenger. That's right. He's playing Helen in that. Okay. Her TV work includes the ITV drama Scott and Bailey. She was in the iconic cult film Rita Sue and Bob 2, but she won a BAFTA, oh no, she was nominated for a BAFTA, for playing Dave Dwight's Jean in the hugely successful 1997 movie, The Full Monty. Okay, there we go. There we okay, go. so a great cast and a Absolutely. great creative team. Yep. I'm looking forward to this. And it will be going to over in a flash, I hope, because it's one hour 50, no interval. Pretty long one for one act, so have a wee beforehand, limit your fluid intakes, but stick around for this and when we'll tell you all of our thoughts 
when we get to the end. And also stick around to the end. Why are we stick around? Oh yeah, to find out how many stars. That's the one. You know the formula by now, right? Yeah, I was just yeah. listening to the music. Music. <laughs> music. <laughs> See you in a bit. Yeah, See the end. We've come to the end straight through one act. Um, one hour, 50 minutes. I almost want to start by saying, in the past, uh, I have loved the work of, you know, Jack Thorne and is it John Tiffany? Yeah. As director and writer. So, you know, and I think like sometimes you like music of a certain artist as well, mm -hmm. but you don't like everything. Okay. Sometimes some stuff doesn't work. Yeah. I do like what they've done, but I didn't like this. Okay, I've got to say, that I think it's appropriate that it should be called the end of history because for me uh, the end of the world would be more enjoyable <laughs> like I, I can't imagine I can't find I'm struggling to find a single redeeming feature about anything within this oh, play oh no Did you have a bad the, time as well? outside of okay. the first five minutes which I thought were maybe slightly enjoyable after then it nosedive into an apocalyptic mess of a show and it's a, a lesson in when you should just say no okay so An absolute lesson of no is what this we piece. do is we follow a family over two decades i think it's 20 years yes. isn't it um and what there is i think where the where it works quite nicely is almost those scene changes in between uh, there was some really nice score oh, they really were the nice highlights. music almost like where there's no dialogue yes and they kind of have nice creative passing of time yes. and set changes yes. sets of really nice music which is quite reminiscent of um harry potter and the cursed child yeah. i think in the way that john tiffany and uses the music be because it's and the same movement director as that piece so uh, is it same music Stephen as well Hoggett, no it wouldn't be the same okay. music but it those would be the moments same were nice however the actual scenes there's only moments of drama it's, uh, some of the worst staging I have seen on the London stage. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't living in their in habitat. It was yeah. set in this um, kind of lounge <coughs> kitcheny area and yet they were so uncomfortable it was as if they're on the waiting at the edge of a platform yeah, waiting for a train. Completely unnatural. Standing. No one in those no environments one. talks to one another Stand in the way that they yes. were speaking to one another. It's like you go get a drink, yeah, relax, do sit something. down, if grab you, some. If you're like, in the they kitchen of your family home, you act like you belong there. And they did you, belong in that space. They acted like they were complete strangers to one another yes. and to the environment in which they were in throughout a 20 year period. So it unnatural. Felt Sure. So jarring and uncomfortable. I literally wanted to tear. I wanted to shout at them. Relax. Move. Just do live in your environment. Them. Please. Like I was by 20 minutes in. I wanted to leave, and I was looking at the door, and I thought, no, it's got to get better. Something's got to give. There's going to be a big moment of drama. The ceiling's going to come in. Something's going to happen. Is there a shotgun on the wall? Please God. And it never did. It does not get mm. off the ground. There were three little segments of drama, I think. That weren't expanded upon. <laughs> no, they get a couple one, of bombshells. A couple of bombshell, the and then is, it moved on. The problem a bombshell is, and as moved a on. Family, but they're so liberal that these bombshells, they just they're very blase about them. They're not really like they're almost if you want to go and like if you want to become an alcoholic, these parents would support you. It wouldn't be a problem. Be like, yeah, you live your life, you be an alcoholic. And as a result, consequence just didn't feel there for me as a threat. Okay, so as long as, long as it's happening over two decades, yeah. you have these parents who, like I say, are very liberal, they're very activists, want the world to be a better place, but mm -hmm. they're also doing something about it and they want their children to follow the same steps, but they don't push them to do anything. So as a result, you've got a daughter who I think is the eldest. Who no, wants the to... son is the eldest. Okay, so... There's a year between those two. I've worked it out. Okay, so they don't give it. So I guess the eldest is the son and mm -hmm. we follow his relationship, how he gets into a relationship. It doesn't work out. He's got kids over the time period. There's one. Then you've got the daughter. Spoilers. Who wants this is set up pretty quick and plus I don't know if anyone's gonna get a No one's gonna this. care. The daughter who's following a, a career, she wants to be she is a lawyer, she wants to be a lawyer, so we follow that career path. We've got the younger one then who um, has some mental health issues that are touched on. Well I think it's kind of an internalized homophobia, mm -hmm. adapting to that world, and so we see that in the scene. So that's quite nice stuff. It sounds like nice stuff. Yeah, you're I always it say sound this. Appealing. I'm like, trying to pick out what's the theme. You could write a great blurb on the back of the script. That's it. 
but literally that would be as interesting as it got. The blurb, and it should, get yeah, the blurb should entice you, but it should come to life in the text. The blurb is as good as it gets. The blurb and the scene changes were, were, as, as, good as, were as, as good as it ever got, and uh, that's it. I, no. Can I talk about that? I, I want to talk about the end, but I don't want to give it away. Anyway, yeah. it comes to the end where we're meant to feel emotionally for what is going on yeah. and buying into this scene that is going on for these characters. And I couldn't give a toss. I wanted to say couldn't give a sh. I literally uh, could not well, care. Well, now I'm going to have to beat I that out. I could not care less about any of these characters. I've grown not to care about them emotionally. I didn't believe them. It was just completely and utterly hideous. And do you know what the greatest shame about this is? It was a completely wasted opportunity because there's no doubt that Leslie Sharp and David Morrissey are fantastic actors. They're some of the best, finest stage well, actors we've got. Yes, and do you know what? There were moments where they're able to work with some of the text and work their magic on some of the text and, and I did feel sorry for David Morrissey come the end because I thought even he it was lumbered with it couldn't do anything yeah. with what he'd been given and yeah. what this was I, I was thinking this is a big ask yeah. and even he can't do anything with this yeah 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 I, even though he was giving his all and also with even was it Leslie Sharp as well in the early in the early scenes she was bringing real nice comedy to yeah, it sort of an un a real reach as well she was really having to reach but she managed yeah. to make it land at it, some point it did make it land but almost I felt that she was bordering on a physical humor that didn't need to be there because she was having to rescue the text so she almost became a little bit farcical do you know what like a little bit of a yeah, do you know what I mean some of these farcical relationships between the brothers and the sisters was too much or guilty like really playing yeah. up and I was thinking no this isn't hammy I, I'm completely hammy I'm sorry I, I I can't buy into that this is how these relationships would be, yeah. even if they were brother and sister. There's no grounded or truth to to it. I think what Ugh. I think what has happened here is that um, Jack, <laughs> Jack, they've had a lightning in a bottle moment with um, Cursed Child. Right. Like all of the elements just managed to add up and they managed to catch a light in a bottle and they've not managed to replicate it. And it, we talk about expectation quite a lot, guys, and I think it is heightened when you've got such a successful piece of theatre that, you know, Harry successful Potter, and the, back catalog Harry Potter well, and the Cursed I Child has its faults. I, I genuinely believe, but it can be completely forgiven by what they've accomplished on that stage. This, there is no whitewashing this, it's just sh and there's, there's just the dynamics yeah. of how they wrong. are. It's all wrong. It's, wrong. it's all wrong. Um, um, lighting, lighting designer was Jack Knowles. Nice. They did Venice Preserved recently. We saw it at the yeah, RSC. Yeah, lighting design was nice. Like, set confused me. Sound and I lighting. I was confused by the set. Okay, let's talk about sound and lighting first. Yeah, so Tom Gibbons on sound. You, Great use of scoring, Whatever particularly score was, in was those nice. scene change yeah. moments. Stephen Hoggett, we've already mentioned for movement director, those scene changes are, are choreographed, they really are. Yeah. And Jack Knowles for lighting, just thought, especially earlier on, one of the scene changes with the light went in the window and illuminating different yeah. things. Beautiful work. Set was nice, but confused the hell out of me. Very smart. What didn't you like about it? What did you find confusing? Was it a dilapid? It was a dilapidated kind of property with panels missing, bricks missing. I don't think we were meant to see that. I, so like, is it I meant to be metaphorical? I think maybe it's metaphorical. Maybe it's... I don't know. I didn't get it either. But do you know what? I was. It was, I was, it was nice to look through the walls at times because anything is, is a distraction to the bloody text. Like, I was thinking, is this genuine? Abs absolutely. Is it future post-apocalyptic? No, it's not. It's just. Is it they're so activist? They are living in a property that is falling apart that's run because down, they, they don't, don't want to spend care. money on it. They don't, I don't think. But that then is their it. clothing didn't re reflect that. There and wasn't the garden rain was beautifully through. kept. Yeah, they weren't having to sweep away. The, no. Those things that they could have done to make sense of that, and I just didn't get it. No, it made no sense. It makes sense. No sense at all. We've talked about two of the cast. Yeah, I mean, a bit like more. I say, Leslie and David are wonderful. They do the very best they can with. It's this. nice to come and see them. Yeah. They are probably the draw. Well, no, because the writer and director draws as well. They did what they could. Yeah. But ultimately, they're gonna, working with something that's broken. I'm not going to lay the blame at their door, but I've got. To, I'll go no. so far as to say I couldn't stand anything that any of the other actors did. I just couldn't stand it. I thought, 
No, you, you, it's not. I don't like, want to lay the blame at the f that no, their feet. No, I, I think it's I the director. Think it's I really, I, I really I've do. I've got to lay the blame but there. But as, yes. as a result, I'm not challenging that. Maybe at some point, I don't know how constricted they would have been in the rehearsal space, not to be able to say, I'm not sure that works for my character. But nothing. Why am I standing nothing, here just talking to him like this? Nothing they did for the what, last ten minutes. Nothing they did in either how they did it or what they said or how they said it worked for their character. Not a single line. Fake laughing at Horror. the end. Just <laughs> <laughs> no. Horrible. It was all wrong. Absolutely horrible. Um, so I yeah, think I'm, I'm I don't want to. Move on. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I just can't, guys. Um, I also had a moment. And if, you had a moment. If you know oh me, oh my goodness! You know Can I, I have set a this moment. up? Can I set this up from my point of view? Okay, go on. Because we weren't sitting together. We were. Like we weren't right we're next. Apart. We're on the same row, but same we were row, further but down. Further down. We don't always like to sit next to each other. Spend enough time to get there, though. I mean, come on, guys. I heard a bit of a commotion at one stage. I had like a bit of a, what, what are you doing? I looked over. It was only Lega Simon policing theatre etiquette on behalf of all us theatre patrons. What happened? So a guy sitting um, two away from me, so not directly next to me, not there again, but the next one along, decided to get his phone out, switch it on, in his lap and at this point I'm distracted but I'm not like I'm thinking no well, let's see how this plays out I don't immediately dive on people so you don't need to worry that much because it could be a medical emergency it could be a medical emergency it could be going off and he's not realizing he's sorting that out you know, I'm, not I'm not initially gonna think you're gonna use your device but then chooses to, to put the camera on lift his phone up above every house of everyone else and start taking pictures of the stage to which I lean across the two people sat next to me and I go, excuse me, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, what? And I was like, put your phone away, now? And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, put phone away. Now the box was behind us, we were in the circle, the box was behind uh, the us. The sound box sound lighting and lighting. Booth, I think it was. And I could even see them looking at one another like, because it was literally in their eye line, going, what? I've got what to say that. So then, as I know. looked over, I could see Simon going, like, mouthing, What are you doing? And this guy going, going apologizing, put his phone away. And then the best bit, you wouldn't have seen this, was the woman <laughs> next to you who was in between looked over you and was like, Quite yes, right, too. Yes, quite, quite right, right, too. <laughs> and she was so proud and happy that you were there policing it for him. Because Do you know, I don't think people speak up. It's not she my job. She would have been happy I'm to please, let it slide. Please don't at me and tell me that it's not my responsibility. I know that it's not my responsibility, guys, but so. Somebody needs to do something because at points it is enough to make me not want to go back to the theatre. It's enough to make me not because I spend so much time frustrated about it and and looking out for it. It's I just don't want to be in the environment where I feel stressed that people don't know how to behave and these people should know better. Okay. Anyway, that's just that's sorry. That's that's a bit of a we digress. An extra bit of drama that yeah. we need to add in. And you know so what? It was probably the in this case, I it was probably the best be. the best part of the whole thing for me. At least I had an. You had to create I your own drama. I had to create my well, own. Drama. <laughs> I was thinking he must have been so bored that he needed. To, yeah. I did. I was looking around often, and I did see heads dropping yeah. and nodding. Oh, down my eyes were closed several times. Do you know one thing I would say about taking photos in the theatre? Unless it's explicitly stated by the production, it's against the law and it's not per it's not permitted. Also, there are production shots for shows that are going to be so much better than the crappy picture you take shaking above the balcony on a camera that probably has the capacity of a potato compared to what they have professionally. So why do it? Like, uh, please make me understand why you would do that. I don't when get it. When your phone has the capacity of a potato. Compared to a professional lovely, there we go. you know, <laughs> See that? big lens. Okay. Anyway, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, let's move on. So We've had an impassioned discussion. Haven't we just? So for the end of history, which couldn't come soon enough for me, we are going to give... One! One star. Just avoid, guys. Like, I'm sorry, but Jack Thorne has showed us what... Do you say he's usually great? I've got to say the book for Junkyard wasn't brilliant. We've given him a lot of sort of credit. credit. You say we're giving him more credit waste. Well, his like adaptations stuff tend to be good. So Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is based on an idea by J.K. Rowling. I don't know if this is autobiographical. His, I'd like his, to look at it more. Is it a story that he's associated with? I'm not sure what the message is. His Christmas were. Carol is an adaptation and was good. Okay. But can he write an original piece well? I don't know. The jury's out. The production me. was good as well. This just but the didn't direction land. was bad. Didn't sit. No. I, I'm glad there was no interval because we would have left. 
I wanted to leave, I really did, but I sat through it for you guys. But do you know what, even though we hated it, somebody's favorite- Hate is this a is, strong word. Well, this is somebody's favorite thing. Oh my goodness, there are two people on the front row who are having the time of their life and were standing come the end. I can only imagine. I was thinking, what show did you see? You know when you see a, a, an actor that you like a lot and you are applauding their back catalog or just their presence or being, if you were a massive David Morrissey fan, you've got the opportunity. To I'm a from, massive David Morrissey fan. But if Morrissey you've got the opportunity, you maybe we get a lot of opportunities like this. But some people don't. It's a massive thing to be mere feet away from your favourite actor. Of course, you're going to stand in a vape, right? Because you're applauding the fact that that actor is giving you lots of pleasure. Maybe not in this role. Let's stand in a vape, being given lots of pleasure. Maybe that's what was going on. Hashtag there. lots of pleasure. <laughs> lots of pleasure. But that's just what we think, guys. Just what I think. Yeah, what do you oh. think? We really encourage that you see things like this. Come to the Royal Court, because the Royal Court is a really great, great innovative venue. Absolutely. We've got it's a great got bookshop. Bookshop, I was going to mention the bookshop. The vibe is great. They, they champion new work, so that's great. And some you win, some you lose. Yeah, this one, absolute loser. But um, <laughs> loser. We're, we're, the, we're the breaker leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.